here again with our 11th overview video today. We are unpacking superior vena cava obstruction. Did you know that you can actually hear the sound of blood flowing through your veins? If you listen very closely, as always, guys, a clinical case today, a 62-year-old man presents to the emergency department and he has some serious complaints, man. He complains of a droopy right eye and blurred vision for the past day. Hmm. The symptoms started abruptly and he denies any antecedent illness. For the past four months, he has also been complaining of increasing pain in his right arm and shoulder. Now, his primary care physician has been treating him for what he thought was shoulder bursitis without relief. His past medical history is significant for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and hypertension. He smokes <clears throat> one pack of cigarettes per day. He has chronic daily sputum production and stable dyspnea on exertion. On physical exam, he has right eye ptosis with unequal pupils. Oh dear. His pupil is 2 millimeters on the right and non-reactive, whereas the pupil is 4 millimeters and reactive on the left. <clears throat> His ocular movements appear intact. Lung fields are clear to auscultation. On examination of the extremities, there is wasting of the intrinsic muscles of the hand. Now, which of the following would most likely explain this constellation of symptoms? Is it A, enlarged mediastinal lymph nodes causing occlusion of the superior vena cava? Is it B, <clears throat> metastasis to the midbrain from small cell lung cancer? Is it C, perineoplastic syndrome uh, caused by antibodies to these wonderful voltage-gated calcium channels? <clears throat> Excuse me. Is it D, the presence of a cervical rib on chest X-ray, or E, a right apical pleural thickening with a mass-like density measuring one centimeter in thickness? Mm -hmm, I wonder. Guys, we're talking about superior vertical obstruction today. What are the important physical findings? Well, on the face, uh, it may be edematous, puffy or red, plethotic, suffused, and cyanose because that superior vena cava is obstructed. So the venous outflow coming down from the face is going to be obstructed manifesting with these uh, signs and symptoms. If you look closely at the eyes of the patient, you'll find periorbital edema, red eyes with a congested conjunctiva, right, uh, which is what some books refer to as an injected conjunctiva or bloodshot eyes, right? You can also have chemosis, which is conjunctival edema. In the neck, we find the neck veins are uh, engorged and non pulsatile Now, this is different to the situation in congestive heart failure, where indeed your neck veins are going to be engorged, but they are pulsatile. And remember, with tricuspid regurgitation, you have those massive CV waves, CV waves, right? Uh, also, you may also have visible tortuous and dilated veins in the chest, wall, and abdomen. And check the flow, it will be downwards. The upper limb may also be edematous with prominent engorged veins. So here are some beautiful images courtesy of Shock Cases in Clinical Medicine. Uh, God bless you guys. So here we can see these beautiful engorged veins in the chest in superior vena cava obstruction. Here is a lady with a puffy face with what we talked about congested eyes. You can't really see chemosis here, but you can see those congested uh, eyes or the conjunctival injection, if you will. Here we have engorged veins in the abdomen that we can see. Here is engorged and the key thing is non pulsatile neck veins, non pulsatile versus congestive heart failure, where those neck veins are engorged and pulsatile. Important points to note, guys, that superior vena cava obstruction, if it's of recent onset, is likely due to malignancy. But superior vena cava obstruction of long standing onset is likely due to a non malignant cause. Please excuse me for the typo there. So what are the causes really of supravenic cable obstruction? So the commonest cause in some 75% of people is bronchial carcinoma. So especially significant is a pack year history of smoking. If you've got a chronic smoker who also manifests with chronic obstructive lung disease and he has clubbing, listen, COPD never causes clubbing. There probably is a superimposed malignancy or something else going on. The second most common cause in 20% of presentations of SVC obstruction is our beloved lymphoma. This happens at extremes of age, usually those who are young and those who are old. Other causes, albeit not so common to account for the other um, some 5% of cases, is any tumor in the mediastinum like a thymoma, a germ cell tumor or metastases, a retrosternal goiter, chronic fibrotic mediastinitis, which can either be idiopathic or secondary to TB or radiotherapy. You might have a giant aneurysm of the aortic arch, carcinoma of the esophagus, 
uh, and really thrombosis or invasion by malignancy and chronic constrictive pericarditis. But by and large, the two most common causes in clinical practice, bronchial carcinoma and lymphoma. Watch out. What are the presentations of supravenic cave obstruction? Well, these patients lack in our clinical scenario, presented with breathlessness and cough, flushing, red, puffy, edematous face, angry looking face. The other thing the patients complain about is headache, 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 especially early morning headache, which is worsened with coughing and they may be accompanying syncope, dizziness, stupor or seizure. All of that because of the raised intracranial pressure that poor superior vena cava is obstructed and any flow proximal to that is going to build up, it's going to back up. All right, giving you these symptoms. And the symptoms are aggravated on lying down or bending forward, which once again speaks to mediastinal involvement and raised ICP sometimes. <clears throat> Other features, as we know, are due to involvement of the neighboring structures. Right, so these patients may have stridor. Why? Because of tracheal compression. They may have hoarseness of the voice because of recurrent laryngeal nerve involvement. They may have a Horner's syndrome, and we know Horner's is defined by ipsilateral ptosis, meiosis, and anhydrosis. And that's because of involvement of the cervical sympathetic chain. You may have dysphagia because of esophageal compression. What are the causes of death in superior vena cava obstruction? It's respiratory obstruction and intracranial hemorrhage. And that's because of the raised intracranial pressure. How should one investigate superior vena cable obstruction? <laughs> so if a patient presents with the stigmata of SVC obstruction based on the history and physical exam findings that we just discussed, it's prudent to do a chest x-ray which may show a mass lesion, may show you bilateral hyalide neuropathy, mediastinal widening. From there you want to go through to a CT or an MRI of the chest to better delineate the pathology shown on the chest x-ray and others according to what you suspect might be going on. So if you think there's bronchial carcinoma going on, you want to do your sputum, send it off for malignant cells, your cytology, <clears throat> do a CT or an ultrasound guided fine needle aspirations, a cytology from the lung lesions. You can do a bronch, uh, which is a bronchoscopy, and sometimes mediastinoscopy and thoracotomy is necessary to get yourself some histology for diagnosis. In cases of lymphoma, you can do a FNAC or biopsy of the lymph node, thin enough for histology. How are you going to treat the cause of supervenic cable obstruction? Hmm? Well, treatment should be given according to the cause. So in bronchial carcinoma, radiotherapy, if it's non-small cell, chemotherapy for small cell in most cases. If it's lymphoma, usually chemotherapy. And then, of course, symptomatic management to relieve the edema, you can give IV furosemide, which is a loop diuretic, right? Dexamethasone as well should be used. The head should be elevated. And to relieve severe obstruction, balloon angioplasty and metallic stent may be used to refer the patient through to vascular surgery. And that's just a palliative measure, all right? Okay, so coming back to our clinical case, guys, we have a, a relatively elderly male with a long-standing history of smoking, got COPD and hypertension, and he presents with what looks like a Horner's syndrome, right? And uh, also wasting of the intrinsic muscles of the hand, uh, and he presents with conjunctival suffusion and congestive symptoms. So what's going on? Dum -da -da -dum 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 -dum. Which of the following was likely explain this patient's constellation of symptoms? Right, the answer here, sorry, is E, guys, not D, it's E. All right, uh, Pancreas syndrome results from apical extension of the lung mass into the brachial plexus, which frequently involves the eighth cervical and the first and second thoracic nerves. As the tumor continues to grow, it will also involve the sympathetic ganglia of this cervical chain. Now, the clinical manifestations of Pancreas tumor, we spoke about them as shoulder and arm pain and Horner's syndrome, which is ipsilateral ptosis, meiosis, and hydrosis. Ptosis, meiosis, and hydrosis. Ptosis, meiosis, and hydrosis. All right? <clears throat> you got a droopy eyelid, you got constriction of your pupil, and you can't sweat on that side. The most common causes of Pancreas syndrome is an apical lung tumor, usually non-small cell in origin. Other causes include mesothelioma, so take your history, history for asbestos exposure, and smoking and infection, among others. Okay, guys, just to encourage you from the Word of God, today we're talking about grace. The book of Titus, chapter 2, verses 11 to 14 declares, For the grace of God, which brings salvation. Note how it says, it's the grace of God which brings salvation, has appeared to all men. And it teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who did what? Who gave himself to redeem us from all wickedness and purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. 
This is the end times, beloved, and we live in a sinful, hedonistic society. My prayer is that you would pursue God and seek God. Because it is appointed once for man to die and thereafter to face judgment. And we can't resist temptation on our own, but we need the Holy Spirit to help us. And the book of Titus says it's the grace of God which brings salvation, that helps us to say no to ungodliness and godly passions. Amen. These are my references. God bless you. I'll see you another time uh, with another helpful overview video as part of algorithms and mnemonics and internal medicine. God bless you.